The Team House, with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. So, with all these deployments, I mean, are there any other particularly hairy experiences uh, that you care to share with us um, deploying with RRC? Uh, you know, I, ideally, of course, the, the bad guys never know you were there, just like you were saying, but... Yeah, ideally, we did have uh, we did have this one um, where we were we were going. Hey, let me set this thing up. Sure. There we go. Thing keeps sliding off my head, man. My hair is too long. I need to get a haircut. Um, we we did this one. We went to uh, Kabul uh, or not, not camp, Kabul, but uh, Kandahar, and we were driving back to our camp, which is not too far from there. Uh, and, and it was after curfew, so typically the normal soldiers in in, in Afghans had to be. A, like stop and not driving on the roads. So we ended up coming back and we broke curfew, just barely coming back. And we got stopped at an A and a checkpoint. And, uh, I was driving one of the vehicles. We had some, some Navy guys behind me in one of the vehicles. And then we had some guys in the front and, uh, we ended up having some, some indige guys with like AKs come up and they're like super aggressive and we're, we're trying to watch them, but we, we, at this point we're detained and, and they've got a, a Dushka on top of the guard shack, a bunch of PKMs, RPKs and stuff like that. And, and AKs. And, uh, so we're like, Hey, we, we're trying to talk our way out of this thing because if they wanted to open up on us, we would be lucky to get out of there alive. I mean, we were in, we're not wearing armor and we're in a thin skinned civilian vehicle. Um, so we're like, what the, I mean, we have like low vis armor, but that's about it. Um, but we ended up, Talking our way out. Sorry, go ahead. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but were these uh, like national police? Were they tribal? Was it who who were the indige? This was uh, A and P, okay. so Afghan National Police. I said that's the Afghan Army, but Afghan sorry. Police A and P. Okay. Um, and we ended up getting held up there, and, and it got to the point where at one point in time, I have my little haji scarf deal on, and I have my pistol underneath this thing pointing at this guy's face who's about a foot away leaning into the car and he can't see it. it's super dark and you know our cars are all blacked out they don't have good lighting over there anyway so he can't tell that i'm pointing at his face i'm just waiting for the call so that we can shoot this guy shoot that guy and then get the heck out of there and i had another guy trained on that dude um but luckily we were able to talk our way out of that and there was no shots fired um but i've been in probably three or four different situations like that uh similar to that that one we had a bigger group but i've been in a situation like that where i only had one other american with me and uh we probably had 30 or 40 guys running up on us and uh we were doing something to find out where the bad guys were essentially mm -hmm. so we were like an advanced element mm -hmm. and uh we had the strike force down the road so when we started having all these guys coming up around us uh we called up let them know and luckily they got there in the nick of time because we had 25 to 30 guys with rpgs um AKs, uh PKMs and stuff like that running towards us. And then right about the time they get 10 yards from the front of our vehicle, here comes our assault force in from the back and just de-escalated the whole situation. You saw cockroaches just scatter at that point. When when you say that in the first scenario, when you said you guys talked your way out of it or barely talked your way out of it, did they not accept uh, did did they know you were Americans? Did that not like give you an instant pass or, or what were you trying to maintain a low profile profile and let your indige talk you out of it or what? That's a good, that's a good question that you asked that. Um, because initially we try to not tell them anything that we don't want them to know. We're just like, Oh yeah, we may be civilian contractors, you know, cause at some point in time, when we open our mouth, they're like, Oh, this guy's not from here. Right. So at first look, they may think we're local. And then once we start talking, they know we're not local, but are we any threat? And so that's where we try to keep it to where we're not a threat. We're just like, hey, we're just helping these people out over here or whatever. Uh, but at that point in time, it got to the point where we showed American flags. We had little VS-17 panels with American flags on that we would we used it mainly for uh, regular army soldiers because we would pass their convoys and sometimes they would shoot at us mm -hmm. uh, when we were low vis. So we used that. But we pulled that thing up and these guys said, uh, we don't care if you are American. Uh even if your George Bush couldn't save you, that's what they said at the time. Even your George Bush can't save you at this time. We have called the Taliban. They come to get you. And we're like, okay, we'll see how this works out. But we're not just getting taken. And luckily, we were able to talk our way out without being in a gunfight. Because if we had gotten a gunfight, 
Um, it could have been a catastrophe. I mean, we were just sitting targets. So you said that six years went by. And- 